yet. Good morning, good morning, church. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It is so good to be here in the house of the Lord. I always say there's nothing better being with the people of the Lord to hear the word of the Lord uh, on a day of the Lord. This is uh, one of the most special days of our Christian walk. Uh, it's Palm Sunday. It's the beginning of Holy Week. And so we want to honor Palm Sunday and um, say that, you know, this is a time that we really should be looking to God and, and doing what we're supposed to do. So I want to say to you today that I'm really glad that each and every one of you are listening this morning and watching this morning. But let us pray. Father, we come before you this morning give you honor, glory, and praise. We want to say thank you, Lord, for being God and God alone. You are worthy, Lord. We thank you for waking us up another day. Not only did you wake us up another day, you gave us breath another day. You woke us up in our right mind, knowing who you are. You are our shield and our buckler. You are our protector. You are our provider. You are everything that we need. So, Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we pray, Father God, for this world. Lord, we ask, Father, that you would just Pour out your spirit upon this world. Bring revival. That people, Father, will, will just call out to your name in a, such a time as this. Lord, we pray for our children. We ask, oh, Father God, that you would just uh, take them and set them apart, that they would serve you all the days of their life. Those who are in the hospital, Lord, we ask that you would just heal them. Father, we pray for those who are grieving the death of a family member or loved one, that you would comfort them this day. We ask for travel and mercy for those who are traveling by land, by air, and by sea. Father, we ask that you protect and bless our military, our police, and our firemen, and all those who are first responders, Lord, our doctors and our nurses and our, and our hospital workers, Father. We ask for a hand of protection around each and every one of them. Lord, we pray for the nation of Israel and this nation, peace, unity, and protection for both our nations. But Lord, we have to ask for forgiveness of this nation, how far we have come in iniquity and sin. Forgive us of our sins. Lord, I pray, Father God, that you would touch the homeless today and the hungry, the helpless, the hurting, and the hopeless. Be with them. Father, for those who are contemplating suicide, intervene, stop them. Let them know that their love, their value, let them know that they have purpose in their lives. Have your way in today, Lord. Get me out of the way. And Lord, let this be a rain word right now, Lord. A word that will encourage, inspire, a word that might challenge us to bring glory to your name. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As you know, this is the first Sunday of the month, and we have our communion Sunday. So we're going to be partaking of communion today. If you don't have your communion ready, I'm going to give you a few minutes to go get your communion. If you don't have juice, uh, get whatever that you have. You know, if you just have water, get water and a piece of bread or a cracker or something. But I want everybody to, to go get your communion and get ready. In a few minutes, we're going to be taking up communion together. And while we're doing that, we know this is hymnal Sunday also. So we're going to sing a hymn this morning. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. Oh, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst in my sight. Angels descending, bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. Come on, church. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior. 
Savior all the day long. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Most of you probably know already I'm not a singer, but I'm bringing a joyful noise to the Lord. Amen. So that's what God's told us to do. I'm going to ask you to, at this time, if you have your communion ready, we're going to uh, partake of communion. I'm going to ask you to take the bread. Jesus says, as often as you do this, remember me. He said, this is my body that was broken for your sins, a sacrifice of sin. Once again, we need to take it very, very personally. We're taking it as a family, as, as a, a community today, but we need to remember that it's a personal it's personal, personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He said, this is, this is my body which was broken. We need to understand what that really means, the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for you and me. He was beaten beyond recognition. It said he didn't even look like he was a human being. He was despised. He was spit on. He was beaten to an inch of his life. And not only that, then he had to carry that cross all the way to Calvary. And as he, as he was beaten and carried that cross, he was thinking about you and I. He was carrying that sin that we committed. So as we break the bread of his body, let's take this together as a family. Father, we thank you for sending your only begotten son to pay that sin debt for us. And we thank you. He said, this cup represents my blood. It represents a new covenant, the covenant of grace and mercy. Where would we be without grace and mercy this day? He said, this blood, it had to be a shedding of a blood. So as the blood ran down his body and it ran down on that old rugged cross, once again, that sacrifice for our sin. And even though he was beaten, he was despised. He was spit on. That was not the worst of it. The worst of it was is when he hollered out, Eli, Eli, lama shabbatane. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And the reason why that was, God had to turn his back on his only begotten son because he could not look upon the sin that his son put upon him for you and I. Always remember the sacrifice and what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. Let us take a cup together. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the blood. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for your sacrifice. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you would uh, open your Bibles. I know everybody got your Bible with you. I'm going to start in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 41 and 10. Somebody sent me a text here a day or so ago uh, with this, this scripture to, to encourage me. I want to, I want to encourage you this morning. I want to, to be an encouragement because I'm going to tell you something. The word of God has encouraged me this morning. I want to encourage you. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. Dismayed mean anxious. For I am thy God. I will strengthen you. Yea, I will help ye. Yea, I will uphold thee with my right hand of my righteousness. It says we're not to fear not. We're not to be anxious. But we all know, with everything that's going on in the world today, that there is fear. There is anxiety. A lot of things going on, emotional things that's going on. But we as Christians, we are depending on the great precious promises of God. We are depending on Him covering us. We're depending on Him being with us. Now, if you turn a couple pages over to Isaiah 43 and 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And though the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. 
neither shall the flames kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. Do we believe that? We're going through so much trials and tribulations today. I believe that God brought this thing down to us so we could look up to him. You know, so many times we only look up to him in crisis or when we need something or when we want something. Let me tell you something. We need to look up to him always. But the world, let me tell you, some of those of us, those who, who, who might not believe in God or, or heckled or, or, or made fun of, of Christians or whatever, let me tell you something, they're looking up and calling on God today. Now I'm going to ask you to turn to the book of Mark, Mark 4. This is what uh, the Lord has given me for you today and me also. Mark 4. And I'm going to start in 34. And we've all, I'm going to start in 30, 35. 35, Mark 4 and 35. When you get there, say amen. All right. Dennis, are you there? Dennis, Mary, wake Dennis up. I can't believe you up in here soon. I'm just kidding. Dennis is not here today again. He's here in the spirit again. But anyway. I, I love Dennis, and I like to have a good time with Dennis. Amen. But anyway, it says, And the same day, when the evening was come, he said, Let unto them, let us, remember that, let us pass over to the other side. And when they had went away the multitude, when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. Let's stop right there. It says, he's, remember that, he said, let us. He didn't say, I'm going to send you. He said, let us. So what he's saying is, I'm going to be with you. And we're going to go to the other side. I don't know where your other side is, but our other side is victory. Our other side is peace. Our other side is joy. He said, let us go to the other side. I don't care what we're going through, what you're going to go through. Jesus says, if we're children of God, if we're in the family of God, he is there with us. And he, and he sent the multitude away, and he took, they took him as he was. See, he had been teaching and preaching all day long. Matter of fact, there was such a crowd on the bank, he got to the ship and said, let's, let's pull out a little ways so I can have a little room so I can be able to, to teach the people. And so he didn't have time to go get supplies. He didn't have time to go get uh, uh, things that he might have needed. So it said it took him as he is. Let me tell you something. We always need to take Jesus as he is because he's the great I am. And it says, and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat to the ship so that it was now full. You know, I've been to Israel several times and I've been on the, on the Sea of Galilee and it's, and it's really below sea level. It's about 12,000, I mean 1,200 feet below sea level, and, and they have mountains all around it. And wind will, it'd be a beautiful, perfect day, then all of a sudden, the wind will come up. Storms will come up on there. So, so he says, they, they, were, they were going on the other side, it was a beautiful day, and it says, all of a sudden, there arose a great storm. So that it was now full. So they was in trouble. It wasn't their mind, wasn't imagination. They were in big trouble out there in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. And it says, and he, Jesus, was in the hinder parts of the ship. Praise the Lord. It says, and he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. Wait a minute. They're tossing. The water's coming into the, the ship, it's about ready to sink, and Jesus is in the back sleep. Why do you think that he was back there sleeping? Let me tell you why. Because he's God and God Almighty. That's why. He's in control of all things. He wasn't worried about that, that storm. He wasn't worried about water coming into the boat. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute. And it says he was asleep on a pillow. Not only was he asleep, he was asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him. And said to him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Master, we have been with you. 
We have fellowship with you. We have lived with you. And now we're in a great storm. We're in a trial, a tribulation of our life that we're about ready to die. Don't you care that we might be ready to die? My Bible says that he wishes that none shall perish. Amen? And so, therefore, Jesus, he arose and rebuked the wind and sent it to the sea. This is one of the most powerful statements in the Bible. Peace be still. Peace be still. In the middle of that storm, he was in the back sleep. And when they woke him up, he said, I got a solution for you. He said, I'm going to take this storm away from you. But even in the midst of the storm, I'm in the boat with you. You see, is Jesus in your boat? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Because we're in a storm, church. We're in a trial, church. One that, that, that's like the likes of no other in my lifetime. 68 years, I've never seen anything like what we're going through here today. But let me tell you something. I got Jesus in my boat. Amen? And I'm waking him up. I ain't gonna lie. Jesus, don't you see what's going on? Jesus, don't you hear what's, what's happening? People are dying. But Lord, you said in Psalm 91, a thousand will fall on one, one at your side and 10,000 at your, at your right side, but none. That plague will not come unto you. I believe that, church. Do you? This is one of the times we need to put faith up. We need to put some feet on our faith. We need to believe what God has said. Do we believe what God has said or don't? That's the key to it. Now, yes, this thing is real. And yes, we are to do what we need to do. If we do our part, God will do his. We need to stay away from each other six feet away or more. When you're out, put on a mask, the way we tell you to do. You don't, don't have a whole bunch of people congregating together. We, we, we need to do that. And if we do what we're supposed to do, God will do what he's going to do. You can trust that. And I mean that. I'm not one to disobey the laws of the land. I'm not going to be real rebellious much. But, but I, I believe God. I believe God. I believe what God says. And anyway, it said that, that he rebuked the winds. He rebuked the winds. And he arose. And there was a great calm. And that's what we need to have within ourselves that great calm. Even in the midst of this storm, even in the midst of this trial, this tribulation that we're going through, we need to have a great calm. Peace be still. Jehovah Shalom, our peace. He whose mind is stayed on him will give him perfect peace. Why? Because he believes on him. Isaiah 26, 3. We need to have our mind stayed on him. Quit looking at all this stuff on the internet, quit looking at all this stuff on the news. It's, it's, it's all this on that's consuming over and over and over. All you hear about over and over. Turn it off and get to the Word of God. Turn it off and get to your prayer calls. Turn it off and call somebody and, and give them a, an encouragement and let them and ask them if they're okay. Let me pray for you. Let's stop this fear. Let's stop this 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 thing that that we're so consumed with this thing. And yes, it's real. Absolutely it is. And people are dying. But we are not to continually and habitually be consumed with this. We may keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen? Fear and faith. Fear and faith don't go together. If you have fear, you don't have faith. If you have faith, you don't have fear. An increase in one leads to the decrease in the other. An increase in one. If you increase in fear, you will decrease in faith. If you increase in faith, you will decrease in fear. So I don't know about you, but I'm going to walk in faith. I'm going to walk in faith. From this day, I, as I say, I believe, but help me my unbelief. Now, we all are human. We all uh, 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 have concerns. Absolutely, we do. Now, to be honest with you, we all have some fear. Come on now. We all have some fear. But we need to, we need to, once, once that fear comes down on us, you know, we need to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where did this come from? Because God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but what? A power of love and a sound mind. 
So when we start having that fear, we need to stop it right there. Take a hold of it. Say, wait a minute. No, no, no. No, I'm not going to let you consume me. Because once you start having fear, you start having doubt. And you start having anxiety, depression, and all other things that, that fear will bring upon you. Absolutely not. If God said it, it's done. You know, people you say, if God said it, I believe it. You know, if, whether you believe it or not, if God said it, it's true. If God said it, it's true. So anyway, after he rebuked the wind, and it came still, peace be still, and they said it to him, why are you, and he said it to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? You know that I was in the back of the boat. You know that I'm the son of God. You know that I'm the Messiah. You know that, 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 that I fed the 5,000 with the, with the uh, uh, two fish and the five loaves. You know that I healed uh, uh, the, the, the uh, lepers. I made the lame to see, uh, the, the blind to see, the lame to walk. You have seen that in me. You know all of that. So now, when your circumstances is dying, is dark, all of a sudden, you don't acknowledge who I truly am. I don't know about you, church, but I always want to acknowledge who Jesus Christ is. And that's why, me personally, I don't put this on nobody else, I partake of communion every day. Because he says, as often as you do this, remember me. I want to remember Jesus every day. Because we go through the trials and tribulations each and every day. I just got a few more things to, to bring to you. Now, once again, this is uh, Palm Sunday. Now I just want to read in the book of uh, where am I at? Lord have mercy. Matthew, Matthew 21. Somebody need to keep a hold of me. Y'all know how I am. Matthew 21. This is the account of Palm Sunday. When you get to say that. And the word of God says, And when they drew nigh into Jerusalem, and were come to Bethpage, and to the Mount of Olives, and sent Jesus to disciples, said to them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass, tied to the colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say all to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughters of Zion, Behold, the king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and the coat of a fell of an ass. Now, this was, this was prophesied hundreds of years before. That the king would come sitting on a donkey. Now, that meant, it represented that the king would come sitting on a donkey. He would come in peace. That's what that meant. If he would come on a horse, it means war. But it says that when he comes sitting on a donkey, he's coming in peace. Who is he? He's the Prince of Peace, isn't he? Ain't he the Prince of Peace? And then it says, disciples went and got it. And then it says, verse 8, and a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches and the trees and straw them in the way. You see, what they did was, when they saw Jesus coming into Jerusalem, they saw him as a king an earthly king, not realizing that he was a heavenly king, had much more authority, much more power than an earthly king. See, they had an agenda. They wanted him to do what, what, what they wanted him to do. They wanted him to get him out of get them out of the depression of the of the Roman Empire or the Roman impression, depression. You see, but Jesus had a, 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 a greater, a greater uh, motive for coming. And as he was coming, they honored him. And that's what that means. It meant it was, it was like a red carpet these days. They took the garments, they put it on the ground, they took palm trees, palm leaves, and they set it down, and that's to honor him. And then what they did was, it says, and they followed crying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna means to save. A save. Save now. Actually in the Hebrew. So he, they, they wanted him to save them now from the Roman oppression and depression. But Jesus, he said, oh, how you really don't know who I am and what I really want to do to you. You see, what he was doing was going to Jerusalem for the last time on earth to be the sacrifice for our sins. He was coming into Jerusalem on that Sunday because on that Thursday, on that Thursday, they hollered, crucify him. You see, just a few days later, all of those hollered, Hosanna, to the, to the king of the Most High. They, they, he didn't do what they wanted him to do. So therefore, they turned their back on They turned on him. How many times in our life that we called out to, to Jesus and he didn't do what we wanted him to do and we turned away from him? Same thing today, church. Same thing today. Let's not let be our, our cry. But once again, he came, he came to die. He came to pay a sin debt for us. And on that Thursday, they hollered out, crucify him. And on that Friday, which we call the Good Friday, they did crucify him. They killed our Lord and Savior. But you know what? They didn't know what they were doing. He came there for that to happen. What a good day that was, Good Friday. What a good day, you know, when you saw him getting beaten and saw him getting crucified right upon nailed to the cross. But the best day was that Sunday, Resurrection Day. Huh? He is risen. Oh, praise the Lord. And that's what we're looking for next Sunday, is that Resurrection Day. Absolutely it is. And that's what we're going to celebrate next Sunday. But this year is beginning of Holy Week. It's the greatest week in the history calendar, of the, of the history of the Christian calendar, is this Holy Week. Now, I'm going to ask you to get a pencil and a pen and a piece of paper. I want you to write down some of these promises. And I want you to read them every day. And as, as, you, as you are looking at the news and hearing all this bad news and all that type of stuff, let me tell you how to get that, that fear off of you and get some faith. Write down Joshua 1 5. For I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Psalm 32 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. I will watch over you. Whatever might be around you, I will watch over you, it says. Isaiah 60, 46 and 4. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. I will sustain you in such a time as this, and I will rescue you in such a time as this, at any time. Isaiah 41 and 10. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Genesis 28 and 15. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. We read that again. I am with you in this virus in storms, and in anything else that comes upon you, I am with you. I will watch over you wherever you go. Isaiah 49 and 16, I have engraved you on the palms of my hand. He got, he got you on his hands. He got you on his hands. He knows who you are. He will never forget you. He will never forsake you. You know the, 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 uh, the, the thing of the uh, footprints in the sand. The person said, Jesus, you said that you would never leave us and never forsake us. You gave us all of these exceedingly great and precious promises. And when the worst time of my life, when I was in the worst trial of my life, I was by myself. I, I, was, I was walking, I was walking by myself. And Jesus looked at me and said, oh, you love the faith. You really don't know who I am. You see, in that time of your life, that you were going through, these are not your footprints, these are mine. I was carrying you. You wouldn't have made it if it wasn't for me carrying you. We cannot make it, church, without Jesus carrying us. And trust me, he's carrying us. And the last one is Leviticus 26, 12. This is one of my favorites. I will walk among you 
and be your God, and you will be my people. He is my God, and I am his people. Amen? He is my God, and I am his people. I am his child, and so are you, for those of us in Christ. For those of us in Christ, and one more. Turn to 1 John 4. I said that before, didn't we? One more. We might have a few more. We might be here all day. Praise the Lord. Y'all ain't got nothing else to do. <laughs> so we just might just be here all day. Amen. Vera, wake up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Vera's not here. But if she was here, she might have been not. Amen. Praise the Lord. I love me some Vera. What did I say? 1 John 4 and 18. But there is no fear in love, for there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. Even in my days of out there in sin and living in iniquity and immorality, he still loved me. Oh. Oh, what a good God that we have. And it says, If any man say, I love God, and hate his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loved God loveth brothers also. But once again, it said, perfect love, perfect love, cast out fear. What is that perfect love? Let's go back up to verse 16. For we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. God is love. Perfect love is God. Perfect love casts out fear. If we're in Christ and Christ is in us, God is in us and we're in him. And we have that perfect love and if we have that perfect love, we believe him, don't we, church? If we have that perfect love, we're going to trust him, aren't we, church? If we have that perfect love, we're going to, to know that we know that we know that God got this. All is well, regardless of what might happen. All is well. I just want to say, I thank each and every one of you for praying for me. I want to thank uh, those of you who have continued your support of sending your tithes and your offering to the church and dropping off in the basket. I, I want to really, really thank you for that. I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. It blesses me to see how you've been faithful, you know, to the to the church here. Because you know, we still have to maintain the church and pay our bills and things. So I want to thank you. I mean. Thank you for, for your support and your continued uh, paying your offerings and your tithes. And one more thing I want to say. Make it. I love you. I love you. And remember this here. God loves you too. And we're to walk in faith and not in fear. In these days to come, I don't know what's going to be happening. I don't know what, but God does. God knows what's ahead of us. He knows what's around the corner. He knows what our tomorrows are. But if we trust in him and look to him, all is well. Love you and God bless you. Father, we come before you today give you honor, glory, and praise. We thank you for this word of encouragement. I ask, oh, Father, that we will walk in this encouragement. We will walk in perfect love. That we will not walk in fear. We will not walk in doubt. We will not walk in anxiety. That we will walk in confidence in you. We will fully rely on you. Lord, I pray that you, if you give us breath another day, that we'll have a greater measure of faith tomorrow. We'll have a greater commitment tomorrow, a greater desire to serve you tomorrow than we have today. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, church.